Hey everybody, welcome back to Burning Rubber Garage. The video I want to make today concerns the 67 to 72 Chevy truck. In this case, Suburban and Blazer. Those are a little harder to come by, um, but I've had a lot of people ask me, hey, what do you look for? What are a few tips? And what do you recommend I look for in one of these trucks? And that's what I want to cover in this video. First of all, these trucks are, there's a lot of them out there. So don't just settle on the first one you find. Look at a few, get comfortable. Uh, I mean, granted, there's going to be one where you go out, you see it's perfect. That's what you want. These trucks range anywhere from $1,000 up to probably $100,000 plus for one of those show trucks. Uh, this one right here is a 1970 Chevy Suburban. This was a beautiful example of what you can find if you look hard enough and long enough. I believe we looked for this for well over a year, found it down in Arizona. Location on where you find this truck can mean a lot. Being down in Arizona, it's really dry. It's not very, uh, not likely to have road salt. It's just gonna be in a lot better shape. It does come with its issues. The underside of this hood had heat from the motor. Top side got beaten on by the sun. Uh, but as far as rust, I would put this truck up against any other vehicle that's out there as far as being clean, rust-free, beautiful frame. Um, as far as what to look for and what you should do when you go to see one of these, make sure they have plenty of time for you to look at it. If they're being a little bit shady as far as like, oh, you can come, but I only got five or 10 minutes, reschedule for another time. You need to spend probably close to an hour looking at this. Don't go at night. Some people that are trying to hide things will only show their vehicle at night because at night it's going to be a lot harder for you to see some of the imperfections I mean, granted they're going to have imperfections you're going to have to be okay with that another thing know your strengths and your weaknesses if you can do basic bolt-ons um, maybe engine work or swap a motor transmission that kind of stuff but you're not very good at body work and you don't really want to learn find a clean body heck find a roller at that point save yourself a little money and put in what you want if you can't do that kind of stuff, but you feel like you could attempt body work or you have a shop you like, get a good drivetrain, but you know, maybe a little rougher body's fine. Uh, we'll go through it with this. I've got my, uh, this vehicle and I've got uh, the 71 Chevy Stepside Frostbite that we'll take a look at uh, as far as what to uh, kind of go over. But as far as things to look for, look for spots where rust can, can build and key spots are wherever moisture or dirt collect. Down in here, especially from the top side, take a look. This truck is solid as can be. I don't think you'll find rust on this anywhere. Cab corners on a truck. I'll show you on the other one, but they'll be right back in here. Rocker panels are another big one. And another one are these drip rails. They just, those are some very common spots. Uh, you're definitely gonna wanna be able to get under the truck and take a look at the frame. But let me go up here and I'll show you some things to look for under the hood. All right, guys, come on up here. Let's get under the hood here. Hood latch right there. One thing, I mean, this could just be as simple as a misalignment or something like that. When you do it, it should pop up. That's perfect. Hold the latch, put your fingers under and lift. Some will not. You're going to have to try and jam and get under there. This one happens to have a light that works, which is awesome. That's not something that's super common. This truck is probably one of the prime examples of a beautiful setup here. Come on up here. I'll show you. This has a crate engine, turbo 400 and a rebuilt rear end, receipts for all of it, which is awesome. It also has AC, nice little alternator, not big enough for this truck, that'll be getting replaced. We have power steering, power brakes. This has electric fans, which is part of why the alternator just isn't enough. When everything's running, it's, uh, it's not, just not enough juice. So if I turn on the lights, the heater, it's just, it's down around 12, which you wanna be up to like 13, so. This is a, just a 350, nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy, but it moves itself, gets itself out of its own way. One of the big common spots, if you'll come right over here, for rust are these battery trays. They are notorious for rusting out, as you saw on the 71 step side, frostbite, trashed. The fender didn't connect to where it is, so my fender on that, and we'll show you when we get up there and show you that truck just missing. There's just pieces missing, which to me, when I looked at it, wasn't that big of a deal. There's a lot of things on that truck that I'll show you that I wish I had kind of watched and looked for. Um, and on this one, you look at bolts are all, they, they look good. Nothing under here is crazy. You've got your horn. Um, make sure stuff's under here. Uh, start it up. Let it idle. Watch under here. Look for things that are just not quite right. Um, look at it when it's not running. Look at it when it's running. Make sure you get it up to temperature. 
Uh, try the heater if, if they have it. Another common one is the heater doesn't uh, doesn't work. This one's got some retro units aftermarket. You've got your AC. Most of the time there's a big box right here and your heater core is right behind there. This one's got a plate. It's got a, an updated system, which is awesome. Um, check your filter. If you're going there and the filter's disgusting, come on, they, this is these are cheap. Put a cheap filter in there, make it at least presentable. But if you go there and that's trash, check the oil. If the oil is black as can be, they haven't probably changed that. Um, just little things you can look for under here. If you really want to get crazy, you can take a look at the brake fluid. Uh, most people do not change that. Check the coolant. You want to do that before you start it. Uh, take a multimeter, check the battery, see how that's going. Look for the sticker on the front of the battery or the back. Okay, this sticker says 2 of uh, 17 right here. So that's probably going to be good for a little bit. Batteries can add up. Um, otherwise, under here, this was just a beautiful little truck. Everything's pretty solid, runs well. AC does need to be charged. I tried it the other day, just not working. But that's something, it's, the parts are there, which is awesome. You've got your AC condenser up here. You've got a separate fan for that. You've got your trans cooler up here. I mean, it's in rough shape, but it's not leaking. So we're good there. These things have taken some hits or come out of a donor vehicle where it's taken some hits. So you've got your electric fan for the AC over here and your dual fans on the back side that do come on. So if you see a setup like this, let it get warmed up. Make sure those kick on. So let's go around the outside here and I'll kind of show you what else to look for. All right, so one thing I want to point out here is you may go look at a truck has a nice set of wheels and tires. More like frostbites, but then these are pretty nice too. Um, don't let a nice set of wheels and tires, because that can make a truck look amazing. Hide some other things that you might miss because you keep getting drawn to this. Uh, another thing I've seen happen is, is I'm looking at the truck, I'm trying to do an inspection, and a guy keeps talking to me as I get to certain areas. Not a problem, but it could be. He's trying to hide something and distract you. Um, I looked at one truck, had a beautiful set of wheels, uh, every time I went to go like look in the hood inside, he's like, man, those tires and wheels are brand new. That's like two grand, $2,000 right there on this truck. I'm only asking X amount of money. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. I keep looking and the whole inner fender had rusted out. So something like this, yes, it's nice, saves you a little bit of money, but I mean, you can get a nice set of wheels and tires for under two grand. Don't let the wheels and tires fool you. Wheels and tires do make a truck. Get the stats right with a nice set of wheels and tires. It's right on the money. Another thing you can look at, gaps. You want nice gaps. And this one has some really good gaps. Not perfect, but they weren't perfect from the factory either. But look at this, from right here down to here, it's really uniform, which is awesome. Uh, one other thing you can look at, some of these, because these little parts will nickel and dime you. If you have to buy a mirror here, or this piece of window, or uh, just little stuff like that, it adds up. So if, if you can check these things, and just be like, okay, yeah, it's got a lot of good parts. It's got a few things, and know in there, worst case scenario, you're going to spend money no matter what truck you buy. Something's not going to be right. Another awesome thing to do, check the doors. Make sure they open and close nice. I mean, it could be as simple as making an adjustment, but look at this. Shuts as good as any new car out there, which is awesome. We'll definitely go inside and show you this, but one thing I want to point out, and I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, on a lot of the trucks I've looked at, this door and the driver's door discolor a little bit. Not all of them, some of them have more recent paint, and this could be a result of being Arizona, kind of like the hood up there. Just a little discolor. You can see a little bit there, normal color here, discolored light. And I don't know why that is, if it's a thinner metal on the door, because these are original uh, skins on the door. I'm just not sure, but that's something you'll have to look at and know that that's a thing. When you do that. So let's go inside, take a peek at this. I just want to show you this right here before we hop over to the driver's seat. Not all trucks, this is one of them that does not have it. When you open this glove box, there's usually a sheet right here that gives you what some of the options it came with. This one's missing. I think Frostbite might be missing it too, but you can see this has been replaced, which is not uncommon. So let's go in here. I'll hop in on that side, you guys hop in on this side, and I kind of want to show you some of the things I really like about this vehicle, which this is probably one of the nice ones you're going to find. Then we'll head up, take a look at Frostbite, and I'll show you how it's a little more dumbed down. Hey guys, come take a look in here. The interior of this is perfect. I mean, is it exactly what I would want? I don't know, but it's perfect. We've got room to seat three right here. It's a tight three. Get your belts up here, right there. We've got speakers back there. 
Um, headliner's beautiful. It's not sagging. I mean, that's that's a big common issue with some of these Suburbans and trucks is the headliner is either non-existent or it's sagging. One of my biggest pet peeves, and it doesn't really bother me, but when it's not done right, it does, is this right here. People cut this out, and you'll see it in Frostbite. They cut this out for an aftermarket radio, so they make replacement pieces for this so that you can get it back to normal, but it's just a lot more work you have to do. I don't mind the upgraded stereo, but I hate when it's not cut right and it's all jagged. So that's kind of nice to see that still there. Got a little ashtray there. We've got our heater valves, or our heater switch, sorry. Heat defrost, dash defrost. Uh, this has rear air, which is really nice. Uh, I really like this. They put this down here. This is custom. It's really cool to have a cup holder. A lot of the old trucks do not have that. Um, over here, we've got aftermarket gauges. Um, they're nice. I tell you what, I almost want to do them in all my vehicles now. You've got a speedometer over here and a tack, which is great. And then you've got your fuel level, not wired correctly. We'll fix that. Oil, water, and volts. Plus right here, this is another custom touch. Driver, passenger, driver rear, passenger rear, window buttons. We've got four switches over here, which you probably won't be able to see uh, to wire auxiliary things with. If you want to run the fan, you can hit that one. Everything in here is done really well. Take a look down there at the speakers. They've even got some nice custom moldings there for it. Uh, kickers, kicker audio all throughout. Just a really nice truck overall. I mean, they've got a air horn in here. The visors stay up. It's got the rear view mirror. Uh, here's your Bluetooth mic so that you can talk as you're going down the road. This is a very good example of what you can get. I mean, you're going to have to spend some cash to get here. I'm thinking at least $12,000, if not close to twenty, dollars to get something similar to this. But spending a little more here, I haven't had to spend a lot on the vehicle. So you can go cheaper to start and know that over time you're going to be putting money into it. Or you can go a little more to start. And hopefully, I can't guarantee it, you won't have to put as much into it and you can kind of enjoy the vehicle. This has been a very solid vehicle. It has a few quirks, but this year we're going to solve some of those. But let's go ahead and take you up to Project Frostbite and I'll show you around it. Here we are with Project Frostbite. It's got a couple odds and ends at the front of the garage we're going to be working on. Headlights, radiator, and a few other little odds and ends. This I wanted to show you. Big spots to really check are right back here. And you can, you, when, you, when you go like this, you should get the same sound all over. If you get a different sound, it could be Bondo. Uh, I've seen people put uh, just stupid stuff there. Um, when you're looking at the bed, check the wheel wells. Well, you want to check the frame. You definitely want to check the frame. I mean, I, you need to get under there. Pretty much all of this is another common spot to uh, rust out. Check your body lines. Make sure your door works. Open it up, take a look around. Uh, what I wanted to show you, and I, I didn't know the Suburban didn't have it, come on over here and I'll kind of show you, give you a little bit of a sneak peek. So this one right here had the, uh, there's just some options here. It's got the dome lamp switch. I'm not sure why that's important, but it's got, it had the heavy duty rear spring. This one came with the 350. Power steering, radio push button, just an amp oil gauge. It's it's got a lot of the hydromatic turbo hydromatic transmission, brake booster. It's got a lot of your options here, and if they still have that, that's awesome to put to look at and get a good idea of what's on the vehicle. Um, make sure that closes. You got parts. This is a very clean truck. It just wasn't taken care of. Uh, I think the guy bought it. It was probably a really solid truck when he got it, and since then he's done nothing to but a disservice to this vehicle. Let me show you a couple of things what I mean. I looked up here, I guess I threw it away, the battery tray. Check out my video if you haven't seen it. It was had come apart at the bottom and was overlapping. Bungie was holding on the battery. I don't think you'll be able to see down there, but let me pull out this, uh, this little phone here. Take a look down there. The fender does not connect where it's supposed to. So this is a common rust spot. I saw that, wasn't too worried about it. So didn't really bother me. Another thing that kind of frustrated me with this, white zip ties everywhere. He's got a white zip tie holding the fan shroud. We're gonna fix that. 
He's got white zip ties holding the wires. Not mad at that one. He's got white zip ties holding the grill on. Kind of upset at that one. But these are minor. A bolt kit for that. The proper for the stuff for this, under 100 bucks. I mean, you got to pick and choose your battles. If you're, five, if you're out there looking in the $5,000 to $15,000 range, you're not going to get a $25,000 truck. You're not. Um, here's another sign you can see. This guy told me heater works, just needs a fuse. And I'm like, oh, really? Heater works? Look at this hose right here. It's going from the motor back to the radiator, not how it should be hooked up. Even if it just needs a fuse to get the blower to work, this should still be hooked up. One line should be going there, the other one right there. Uh, with it not hooked up, that tells me that heater core leaks. Uh, another thing you want to check, make sure these aren't cracked because people get frustrated. Those bolts underneath, a lot of the time you need to remove the fender to get to them. Have some crazy extensions. That whole piece has to come off to service any part of the heater. Fan shroud, this one is uh, engine driven. It's not electric. It worked really well. Radiator's now leaking. It, it, it happens. It really does happen. This one's got headers. We've got nice wires, a nice dress up kit. This is another thing you want to watch out for. He gave me a receipt on this that this had been rebuilt. So I'm not as worried about it. It was dated too. But a lot of people will slap this. It has a valve cover, beautiful air cleaner, just some really nice. I'll put some new wires on it to hide a crappy engine that's leaking. And I mean, it's just another one of those tactics to really hide stuff. Um, these wheels down here. These are, these are beautiful. I'm not going to lie. These set the truck off. But I also still inspected it. I didn't pull the wheel off because it's not my truck. But I went in here. You can see the brake pads. Make sure they're good. Um, somebody who's running them bad will see some grooves in here. Um, just, just inspect stuff. These can be used to hide or move a truck way faster than it should. Because someone looks at it and goes, man, I looked at two trucks. One had stock wheels. Didn't really... Uh, didn't really like how it looked. Again, you can buy wheels for pretty cheap and tires. Another thing you want to look for, the five lug. Five lug is very popular. There's six lug out there and there's eight lug out there. I've even seen, I think it was six in the front, eight in the rear for, I think it was a camper special. There's a lot of variations of these. If I remember right, you're not going to find numbers matching. You're going to find a motor that's stamped for a period of time. I don't think they have numbers matching. These trucks are really crazy because you could have a base model that had a lot of options. It's all how they were ordered. Um, you could have everything from a small inline six to a 400, uh, I think you call it a 402, but a 400 V8, you know, uh, three on the column, four on the floor. I mean, there's so many modifications and think people after the fact would put a big block in here with a four speed manual so that the world of C10s, they don't really care as much about how it's like configured. It's really hard to nail that down. There's not like, oh, I've got a Cheyenne. That means this and this. Because you can get a truck like this, the custom package, and it can have all the options that a higher trim level would have. So don't get uh, weighed down with that kind of stuff. Get what you want. Try and find it and make it work within your budget. And then just enjoy it. That's really what you do. Let's, let's hop in here for a second. All right, so with it being really dark in here, you'll notice there's no headliner in this one, but it's beautiful. It's been painted, it's been taken care of. Up here, I'm telling you about, this is where they've removed it. You can kind of see where they chipped some of it. Um, it's not bad. I don't mind that. It was done pretty decent, but just know you're not going to be able to go back to a factory-style radio unless you get a cutout piece to replace that with. Um, you've got your switches right here for your air. Uh, it's definitely a lot more basic than the last one. Again, you've got your tray here. That's a good indicator of if it works. I put some stuff in there. Key's always right there. This right here is a pain in the butt. Turn signal switch. It's actually back in here by the turn signal stock right here. And it's a pain to get to. So if it's something like that, if you take that to a shop, just know you're going to be as much as a brand new steering wheel for most shops. Um, that's why I've got a brand new steering column in this. Uh, it was just cheaper to do that than to take it to a shop to get that replaced. It's sad, but it's it's one of the things that he told me, oh man, that's just a simple switch. And I had never done one or looked into it. It's a pain in the butt. So if your signals aren't working and you think it's this switch, 
man, I tell you what, knock them down on the price. That's something I would argue over and let them know that that's a very difficult thing to do. Um, you can just buy, a, this one has tilt. If I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't do tilt just for the simple fact that it just makes it harder to repair. Very basic gauges on this one. We've got a speedometer and a fuel tank. That's it. You got your turn signals. It shows an issue if there's some oil pressure issues and other stuff like that. I wouldn't trust it. Light switch over here. That's why we have these gauges right here. These are very common. I think I have it in the Camaro. Uh, same kind of setup here. This one gets me my engine coolant temp, my volts, and my oil pressure. I trust these a lot more. Uh, you need some gauges because last thing you want to do is see your oil pressure drop. You don't catch it in time and it's too late. You've got to buy a new motor. Uh, otherwise in here, these pedals, I don't like those, uh, but again, that's just, that's under 50 bucks to buy new pedals. It's just, they're really flimsy and I don't like them. Uh, make sure your wipers work, but again, not a big deal. When you're in the vehicle, make sure your brakes stop. Now, granted, it's not going to stop like a brand new car. You're probably going to have to push it harder. Uh, the old ones, operate off a of vacuum generally. So at idle, it can be really tough to stop if the idle's not set correctly. Uh, put it in reverse, drive a little ways in reverse, make sure it shifts in. If it has a really hard like that, probably not, not amazing, could be a shift kit though. Put it into neutral, try that, make sure it freely rolls, make sure it's not uh, binding up or anything. Put it into drive, make sure you can get it down in a second and first. Trust me, those will come in handy, especially with the brakes on this. I'll drop this thing down in a second quite a few times on bigger heels to let the engine help because the brakes are just not quite as good as brand new brakes. So I think we're running disc and drum. The seat is another thing. They can add up depending on how much time, money, if it's custom. Uh, this one's going to need a new frame. It will not lock into place. There's a pair of vice grips that I did not see when I bought it holding the seat locked. Still works. Just little things to look for. Get in here play with stuff. Be like, hey, does that work? If he says yes or she says yes, you're not going to hurt their feelings. Try it. Do it. Get your hands on stuff. Move it around. These right here, make sure they work. Just go through the vehicle. Turn your lights on. Don't hesitate to turn your signals on and off. Try stuff. Um, while it's idling, turn your left light. Walk to the front. Walk to the back. Uh, turn your right on, walk to the front, turn your hazards on, try stuff, because these are things that will creep up on you. Uh, like this this truck now has to have a uh, the brake switch adjusted or possibly replaced because I'll be going down the road and they stay on. It's little things like that. Take your time. Like I said earlier, make sure they have the time for you to walk through. Take a look back here in the bed. Now somebody who's rhino lined this, that could be problematic. Um, they could be trying to hide something, so get under there, take a look at that. Uh, I'm not too worried about it because it can be, I can just saw the bolts off on the other side and get a new bolt kit, not a problem. I'm not a big fan of the rhino lining on the old trucks, but I don't mind it. I'm a big fan of a wood bed kit. If they have a wood bed kit, check the bottom. Make sure they stain the bottom because, because the top might look really good and they didn't stain the bottom, that's where it's going to rot and the boards are gonna to go to crap. So overall, check the tailgate, check the lights. I mean, there's a lot of cool things for this. Bumpers can be expensive. This one is really clean. This is another Southern vehicle. I buy a lot of my vehicles from the South. Tailgates are really cool, but the hardware can start to add up. Just little stuff like this. Little details like this can really add up. So take note of those, but also find what's wrong with it so you can talk them down a little bit. Uh, turn signal switch for me, I'd be like, look, turn signal switch doesn't work. I need to take out 400 bucks because that's not, it's pretty much a new steering column, which you guys saw in another video. I put one of those in. But overall, will you enjoy this truck? Yes, you will. You're going to like this truck. They ride very nice with the coil kit. Uh, Dodge runs coils on all their new stuff. No more leaf springs. It's because it rides nice. It rides amazing. Plus, not to mention, you can lower it easier. This one's lowered, I believe it's I think three and five, three inches in the front, five in the rear. I like to go another probably inch back here just to get that stance perfect. But it's beautiful because you can just put some blocks in and you're lower. Uh, don't buy cheap kits, but lowering them gets them that perfect stance. Let me see if I can get you guys a way to see how the rear suspension looks so you kind of uh, know what to look for. All right guys. 
lucky enough to stumble upon one of these to show you. Here's your coil springs. You notice there's no leaf springs here. This is why they ride nice. This is why people really like them. This is a good way. It's really easy to get the bed off of these. It's, I think, eight bolts. You can lift the bed right off. Most of them have the gas tank behind the seat. That can be problematic. One for fumes can start to stink. When they leak, it's leaking in your cab. They make some of these kits here for not very much money. If you're gonna go fuel injection, this is the way to go. Get a kit, mount right back there. This looks really short, but it's awesome. You can kind of see how the exhaust works. Uh, you can see the suspension. There's no weight back here, so it's really tough, but this is what the back end looks like. I mean, these lights are just wired up here so I could drive around with them with the bed off for a little bit. These came off a Jeep. They're not permanent. They won't work for this truck, but they are there for right now. Gas tank is a big plus. This is one of the first mods I would do to these trucks after, of course, you get the stats right with wheels and tires. Springs, this is how you're going to lower it. If you put a block in here, you actually just set a block right up and in there. They make them in, I think, inch, inch and a half, maybe even half inch increments. Uh, you throw the block in down there, which then lowers the body because it pushes this up. So really fun. They really come with strong rear ends. These trucks are amazing. If you're thinking about getting one, just take your time. When you find the right one, be ready to jump. Cash is king. If you have cash saved up, you're probably going to be a lot better off than some guy who's trying to get a loan. So if you have cash, you find the right truck, you can probably make things work. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have any questions, throw them down below. We'll try and get to them. We'll see you on the next one.